dressed in my Tuesday best. Is it Tuesday when I'm filming this? Ready for some work. I'm in the wonderful, wonderful community of Kenora, Ontario, Canada, which is close to the Manitoba border, I'm close to the center of Canada, south down by the U.S. border. Uh, I'm picking up a load here, I got to tarp it and take it down to Brainerd, Minnesota, which is about six hours south of here into the United States. They only unload there until 4.30. I have to get there by 4.30 to get unloaded, which means I have to leave here by about 10 o'clock to get there by 4.00. If I get here, like I got here at 7 a.m. this morning, and if I get loaded right away and get into the tarp shed right away, get my load tarped, I can get, get out of here by 10, but it looks like we might be uh, unloading tomorrow morning. I've gotten everything I need all ready to go. I've gotten all my paperwork set, ready to go, ready to send in as soon as I get my load paperwork, my BOLs here, my bill of ladings. Uh, send those in, get that cleared at the border. So they have a tarp shed here and I have to tarp in there. I'm not allowed to climb up on top of my load here for safety reasons, uh, which is, they, they supply a nice tarp shed here. That's nice, but there's only two bays. So only two guys can tarp at a time. Now the way it's supposed to work is you go into the tarp shed, you use their crane to get the tarps over your load and you tack it down on all four corners and then you move out of the tarp shed and finish bungeeing it down outside so that the next person can get in and use that crane because that's the whole point of that tarp shed is just to get your tarps over your load because you, you're not supposed to climb on top of your load. So you're supposed to just, you know, throw your tarps over, move out of the tarp shed, go bungee it outside. So many guys, uh, they don't do that and they put every single bungee on, they complete their whole tarp job inside the tarp shed and then uh, the lineup builds up behind them. And, uh, you know, it could take out, I've waited six hours here before uh, because guys in front of me were taking three hours in the tarp shed. Usually, if you do it correctly, for me, it takes me about 20 minutes. 30, 20 to 30 minutes tops. But 20 minutes just to throw the tarps over and you're out. But uh, it, the world doesn't work that way. It doesn't always work uh, so smoothly. Not everybody's on board with uh, you know, moving along quickly. So, uh, once I have the the load tarp usually from when I'm sitting where I am now they move me into the staging area now so usually from this point if there's no one in my way in the tarp shed I can get out of here in about two hours less than two hours that's that's everything done rolling away the time is now 8 43 so even if everything went perfect right now I'd be leaving here at about 10 30 10 45 which I don't think I'm gonna make it before 4 30 down in Brainerd then which is fine, I can just unload it in the morning then, but eh, uh, I like to get unloaded the same day because then I can start moving towards my reload and be at my reload first thing in the morning instead of being at my unload first thing in the morning. You know what I mean? Either way, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. You always try and shoot for the best plan, right? You make a plan, but this is trucking. You have to remember, this is trucking. Plan for the plan not to work out. Some of you have been asking about my bunk heater S-bar situation, uh, my diesel bunk heater underneath my sleeper. Uh, it's an Airtronic D2, I believe. Uh, it might be a D4, I'm pretty sure it's a D2. I gotta double check that because I'm looking for a rebuild kit I'm gonna buy. It looks like they're about like 30, 35 bucks on Amazon. Uh, but uh, it includes a new fuel filter, a new burner screen, and new gaskets for on there. Uh, I think my fuel filter, on oh, there's a tiny little fuel filter on the fuel pump underneath my truck. Uh, that takes diesel fuel from my tank and uh, puts it through to the burner. I think it's just a little bit plugged up. I think I just need to... Even maybe I can just take it out and clean it, you know? Maybe, maybe I should try that first before spending money. Uh, I looked at buying a new heater. They're about $1,200 for a new heater. I'm talking in Canadian dollars here. Sorry for my American friends. Just take a few hundred dollars off and you got your price. $1,200 Canadian is probably, what, like $900 American? 
something off, something like that. I don't know, not exactly, but instead of spending all that money on a new heater, I'm gonna try to keep this one running because it still heats well. It's just, I don't think it's getting fuel properly. I, I ran it through several cycles of just straight kerosene, some diesel injector cleaner, some diesel cleaner, which helped a lot. I can get it running now, but it's still not running at 100%. So that's just my little update for those of you who've been asking. Uh, still working on it. It's it's working, but it's just, it's, it's not working as great as it should. So I still gotta, my next step will be to clean out that filter, see if that'll work. And if that doesn't work, then I gotta take the whole thing apart and buy one of those rebuild kits and spend a day or an afternoon, whatever. Just, oh, let's, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. It'll take me a full day. Let's <laughs> take a day fixing that thing up. Cause then I can get it fixed for like under 50 bucks instead of buying a new $1,200 heater. And if that still doesn't work, then I got to buy a new heater. I set a new record for myself. It's 10.15 and I'm out of here. What was that, from 8.37? From when I got to the staging area? 9.37. What is that? I, it's less than two hours, that's for sure. Eight thirty-seven to ten fifteen. I'm rolling. I think I might make it. Just getting out of their yard here right now. I am gonna have to uh, laser focus myself and hopefully hit no delays. I don't have to stop for fuel. I think I might make it and getting loaded today yet. What is that, an hour and 23 plus 15, 33, 38. An hour and 38 minutes, am I right with that math? I'm just doing that off the top of my head. Hour and 38 minutes. A new record. Next time we try to beat hour and a half, even. The thing is you still gotta do a proper job tarping too, right? I mean, I don't know if I could save any more time than I did.
chances are, even if they start right now, I'm still going to be waiting here, and I got zero minutes available to wait. So right now, it's, it's looking like I'm not going to make it now. <laughs> I got about 15 minutes to play with. That's all I got. If I can't get cleared in the next 15 minutes, then uh, that will delay my delivery till the morning. And that means all of this rushing this morning was for nothing. I'm in Port Francis now, and by some miracle from above, my customs just got cleared now. That is the fastest I've ever seen it done. That must have been a fluke. They hadn't even started it when I was in emo, and that was just 10 minutes behind me. In 10 minutes, they, they opened the file and got it cleared and customs certified. Wow. So yeah, we don't have to pull in. We're still on schedule. We didn't waste any time. Still looks like I should be able to get unloaded today as long as there's no other delays and as long as they're okay with unloading me at about 4.15. I'm gonna give them a call once I'm across the border to let them know I'm on the way when I'll be there and see what they say. If they say no, that's too late, well, we'll sleep at the gate again and make sure our batteries don't die this time. Slide right on Trans Canada Highway, Highway 11. Hold on, hold on. We gotta get there first. So glad that that happened.
mean, it looks great on paper. We'll see what it looks like when, uh, <laughs> when payday rolls around. It looks like it should be good. I'm gonna pull up to the door. The time is 4.09. Nope. Yeah, 4.09 p.m. That is a pretty good time. Just under six hours to get here. Today's been a good day. Let's keep it that way. That was probably the quickest pickup and drop I've ever done on this route. So how long did I say it took before to get loaded? Not counting when I got to the gate. I got to the gate at seven, but when they started on me, it was just about, let's say 8.40, right? Just before 8.40? So eight, around to 8.40. I was out of there 10.15, 9.40, so an hour and 35 minutes. I was rolling down there. I got here in just under six hours. So that's seven hours, 35 minutes, and then 45 minutes, no, less than that, 40 minutes, I was unloaded here. So seven and a half, eight, ten, like just over eight, like eight and a quarter hours from the time I started getting loaded, the time I was delivered and empty. That's not bad. All right, now we gotta go to Minneapolis, pick up a load there tomorrow morning. Like I was telling you before, there's two pickups on this load. So first one's at 7 a.m., second one's at 9 a.m. I think I'm gonna go and park as close to the customer there as I can. Looks like they have parking on the street. Uh, I'll double check that. We're gonna stop in St. Cloud, Minnesota for fuel. Fuel there is the cheapest on my route today. And uh, I'll double check everything once I get there. I still don't know why St. Cloud, Minnesota has so much cheaper fuel than everywhere else around always the cheapest by a long shot and I'd say like 40 50 cents cheaper sometimes must be the local taxes or something I don't know but here we are grabbing some cheap juice Side and 
200 meters. Actually, it's right here, Karen. What are you talking about? Look at that, no lineups. Wow. Nice.